Hello, I'm Tim Vandarelli from Ferrocell USA. I'm here today with collaborator Michael Snyder from, oh, sorry, I didn't even start the PowerPoint presentation, thanks. This is my first time doing this. So. My name, I already told you that, Mike Snyder is a co-researcher and uh, we published paper together with Drs. Alberto and Adriana Tufali from the Sao Paulo University in Brazil. Unfortunately, they couldn't make this conference. They had other obligations. Um, but we're here to talk about controlling light diffraction with magnetic nanostructures. Oh, yeah. I'll get the hang of this. We're presenting the main results of our research using ferrofluids to control the light scattering in some devices based on, our nan on, our, on nanotechnology. We are presenting the ferro lens or the ferro cell, which is commercially known, which is basically a Healy Shaw cell with ferro fluid. And another device, the ferro lens cross polarizer, which is a ferro lens placed between two polarizers, obviously, and illuminated with white light and subjected to a magnetic field. We've obtained the equations which represent these systems and solved them analytically and numerically in order to compare with the patterns obtained using the experiments. We've also explored the experiment with the patterns obtained from atmospheric optics, such as the perihelic circle and sun dogs, <clears throat> obtaining experimentally in the lab the jumping laser dogs and the paralasic circle, which Alberto, Dr. Tufale coined the phrases. And more can be read in our paper, a recent paper, Observing Dynamical Systems Using Magneto-Controlled Diffraction. What's a magnetic field and how do we represent it? Well, historically, Michael Faraday recognized the magnetic field line based on his observations, iron filings, and compass needles. But we know a magnetic field is in 3D vector space. And what the ferro lens does is it basically takes a slice of that 3D vector space and shows us in 2D what the, <clears throat> in actually any angle. It doesn't have to be parallel or perpendicular to the field. It can be coming at any angle and you will get <clears throat> iso, <clears throat> excuse me, ISO lines showing us that field. <clears throat> uh, this frame here is basically just a, a better image from the last one. And in this particular image, we see a magnetic pole. This is one pole. I don't know if it's north or south. It wasn't marked. In this image, we have a dipole. We have one pole up here and one pole down here. And we can see the block region between these two. And these images are basically flatter than the ISO, but these are slices from the 3D. In this image by Michael Snyder, we see two magnets side by side. The south poles are in the center. It's lit with a ring of lights similar to this, and the north poles are on either side here, and we see the scattering in these patterns. Uh, in picture A, we see a ferro lens device with lighting without a magnetic field. And here we placed a magnet on it and show the scattering in this. The ferro lens combines many technologies and disciplines, including magnetism, optics, ferrohydrodynamics, and visualization methods. For example, you can see similar light diffraction in clouds. Uh, ice crystals aligned by the clouds electric field diffract a beam of light uh, known as crown flashes, and they're guided by the electromagnetic field, as we see in that image. More information can be had read in our article from, or a paper from 217 on light polarization using ferrofluids and magnetic fields. And it includes information about uh, uh, the 
atmospheric effects of scattering. And at this point, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Michael Snyder, and let him finish up. OK. Um, in this slide, we have the uh, Ferrolens cross polarizer apparatus. This apparatus is designed for education. You can imagine in, in high school or first year physics in college. Uh, the, uh, we have two polarizing films, and we have the ferrolens in the center with the ferrofluid. And on the B figure, uh, we can see the top of the uh, device. And on C, we can see where you place the magnet, magnets for the applied field. OK, on this slide, we have the uh, real world image from the cross polarizer and the applied field. And on the right-hand side, we have the uh, computer uh, simulation of the same uh, applied field with a single light source. And the, uh, the calculations are done with hyperbolic polynomials. In this slide, in figure A, we have the uh, vector field of a ring magnet that's uh, magnetized through the thickness. In figure B, we have the ferrous cell image of the same uh, ring magnet, and we have LEDs around the perimeter. In the C figure, we have the real world image of the cross polarizer with its single light source and the ring magnet. In the D figure, we have the computer simulation of uh, the C figure. And you can see there's high correlation between what the computer says we should be getting and what we're actually getting. And you might wonder, how is, how is this possible? How is all this working? And this is probably the most important slide I have. Um, ferrofluid is designed to, uh, ferrofluid particles are designed to repel other ferrofluid particles unless you apply uh, applied field, which uh, overcomes that repulsion, and the part of particles start sticking together. Now, these particles are in a field gradient. So they're moving at the same time that the rods are growing. And what really is happening here is we're self-assembling a diffraction grating. Uh, and there's some little magic going on here, because when you remove the field, these particles chains will start dissipating. So when you apply the field, you get a diffraction grating. And when you remove the field, you lose the diffraction grating. Uh, this, these properties, these physical properties of ferrofluid was known even in 1985. Uh, Ronald Rosenzweig uh, in ferrohydrodynamics uh, described these as, uh, as anomalies, anomalies. And the funny thing is, you know, what was an anomaly or, you know, something we didn't want in 1985 is actually something we really want in 2019 because we have uh, diffraction gratings on demand. <laughs> okay, this slide, uh, we're basically uh, just reinforcing the idea that, you know, we have a diffraction grating that's being created on demand. We have multiple layers of it, and you can describe this with the geometric theory of diffraction, and it's also related to uh, Kircher dipole transverse scattering. That's another uh, theory that we're checking into. Okay, in this image, we're uh, shooting a green laser into a ferro fluid, into a ferro cell, and uh, using different applied magnetic fields to rotate the diffraction flare, or the, the wing, sometimes we call it, so uh, basically, the, the laser has not moved. The only thing that has changed is the uh, applied field. And we can rotate that flare anywhere we want to, 360 degrees. OK. On the left-hand side is a computer-generated plot of a, a north pole and a south pole uh, of two magnets that's facing the observer. On the right-hand side, we see a real-world image of a, a ferro lens with 36 LEDs around the perimeter. And you can easily see that you know, the left-hand image is a dipole, and the right-hand image is also a dipole. 
In this image, uh, we have six magnets total, uh, three of them with the North Pole facing the observer, three of them with the South Pole facing the observer. And we have computed the, uh, the isopotential lines and also the vector lines. And you can see that the isopotential lines run side to side. And the, in the real world image, the same magnets uh, with the uh, lines of scatter or the, the diffraction pattern that we're seeing uh, run side to side. So we have high correlation between the computed image and, or the computed plot and the real world image. Okay, this is one of my favorite slides. This uh, magnetic array is a very simple array, but it took me 10 years before I tried it. I, I've tried every, probably every other array. And how this ray, array works is the magnetic moment of each magnet is pointed to the midsection of the next magnet. And when we compute the field, we ended up with a twisted star pattern. And when we made, uh, tried it in real life, uh, we also ended up with a twisted star pattern, uh, showing that the, uh, both images are showing us uh, isopotential lines. While it's not a perfect match, it is a darn close match. Okay, our conclusions are the light patterns obtained with the fair lens depends on the geometry of the light source and the applied field. The cross-polarized light patterns closely resemble the patterns of hyperbolic polynomials as shown in our recent paper. The self-assembled chains of nanoparticles created by the applied field act as a dynamic uh, diffraction grating when the field is applied and disappear when the field is removed. And the light diffracted by the ferrofillet rods seem to follow the isopotential lines of the applied field. And we'll open up the floor for questions.